Hi, it's Kerner Tex here again with the next in the series of videos about building Beyond Linux from scratch 9.1. So I just thought I'd start off by showing you the um, Linux from scratch booting again, just to show that the um, GPM boot script is running that loads the GPM driver. So if I just start this boot off, as it goes past, you should see somewhere there it is at the end starting GPM console mail service so that was the boot scripts that we installed that we started manually after we installed it but now uh, the scripts that had been installed start it and shut it down automatically when we start and stop the machine respectively so in this video um, now that we've got a means of copying and pasting commands and of browsing the book what I'm going to be doing is to um, be going through some of the configuration, some some of the earlier stages of the BLFS book where um, some configuration done in terms of hardware um, as well as also um, some more sort of general, generic configuration around uh, users and other sort of customizations that can be done just things that make life a little bit easier for us which is what it's all about at this stage part of that obviously was putting GPM and links on the system uh, to enable us to copy and paste commands directly from the book into the system uh, for example some will be putting color on the prompt so that we can see straight away um, without having to look at the last character on the prompt which is currently a hash indicating the super user um, the colors just indicate immediately without having to read anything on the screen that whether you're a super user or a, a standard user um, other things I've been modifying the, the prompt to put the path in for example just to make it a little bit easier to to see where we are and that where we are at the moment in the directory structure and that will help prevent mistakes like I made in the last video where I, I forgot that I was in the wget directory and downloaded GPM and expanded it and built it in the wget directory. So um, as I said what I'm going to do is I'll get the um, Linux from scratch website up um, in I'll leave this as the this is the first term. I'm going to do Alt Two and log into that, and I'm going to get the Linux from scratch website up in this terminal. So I'll go to the BLFS part of it, go to the Read Online link, just go down, go to the next page. There's the book, and what I'll do is I'll follow through on the text screen at the same time as the um, uh, Firefox web browser I've got here. So it'll be easy to read on the Firefox web browser, but obviously I'll be using the text console to the actual live console that the LFS is on to copy and paste the commands as we need them between the two terminals that I've got. So I've got the, just recap, I've got the, uh, on the first virtual terminal, virtual console, I've got the prompt where I'll be putting all the commands in. And on the second one, when I do Alt F2, I've got the um, book, which uh, concurrently I'll be reading on the um, Firefox browser here. So the first page is preface, and it's just going through some of the editor's comments. There's a forward there. Some information about who would want to read this book. So obviously you're interested in reading it because you're here watching my video, uh, which is all about read the um, BLFS book. Then this is how the BLFS book is organized in introduction. There's post BLFS configuration extra software. So this is a bit we're going to be covering in this video, all of this section. After that, it's basically dip in and pick out what you want to install. So that'll be what the subsequent videos that I'll be doing are all about. So I'll be picking certain tools out. Um, the, as I suggested in the um, 
introduction video my idea is to get a basic X window system up and um, well my idea was to get a basic browser up it seems looking at the ones that uh, detailed in the BLFS book none of them are basic they all need a lot of libraries installed before they work which is a bit unfortunate um, I have identified one browser um, but it's quite out of date and I'm not sure if it's being maintained anymore so there's potential security issues there if it is out of date um, but we'll worry about that when we come to it for now we'll just concentrate on getting the uh, the system we've got at the moment uh, more customized and more of a, a friendly feel to it if you like so as it says it goes through here the next bit is which sections of the book do I want and so on so it kind of explains how you might want to go through this book yourself um, it says here that unlike the Linux scratch book it's not designed BLFS is not designed to be followed in a linear manner and that's because LFS provides instructions how to create a base system, so that's all the packages. Whereas BLFS attempts to guide you the process of going from base system to whatever system you want to turn it into. So, as I said in the previous video, you might want to, or sorry, in the introduction, I think, you might want to create a server that serves up web files, either for the web or Samba shares or NFS shares, or you might want a um, you know, if it's a web server, for example, you might want to install PHP and have a full LAMP stack. Um, what, what I'm going to be focusing on is um, a, a normal, what I'd call a normal office desktop that you, or even a home office desktop, sort of thing you want for general use. Um, the reason I do this because it covers perhaps the majority of packages that are in the book. So we'll be having. Windows managers, desktop managers, you know, fully featured um, uh, window managers where, you know, like we've got KDE and GNOME and so on. Um, then things like uh, Office packages, there's LibreOffice is the obvious one, but there's also the GNU ones which have got a spreadsheet called Abbey Word and a web processor which I can't think of the name of. Sorry, every word is the word processor. and Numer numeric is the spreadsheet, beg pardon. So they're, they're just standalone packages rather than a complete suite like LibreOffice is. And then, of course, there's browsers to install and you know, maybe some other, other software that might be useful, as well as system utilities like, for example, PCI utils to see what uh, PCI hardware you've got attached, USB utils, a similar thing to show what um, USB hardware you've got plugged in, um, stuff for burning optical drives and so on, it's it's all on there, there's lots of stuff, even programming and development stuff, so um, I'll, I'll be picking out a, a pretty good, hopefully a pretty good selection of software to install and um, hopefully that will give you enough information to go away and either install that software yourself or uh, you know pick out stuff you need yourself that I haven't covered. So that's what this chapter goes on about, just the different areas of the book and how you might want to go through the book. They have a page on conventions, typographical conventions, so it's similar to the LFS book. I won't concentrate on that too much. Uh, the SBView values, again, it uses the same sort of standard bill units as in the LFS to give you an idea. Um, they've now also started introducing this parallelism equals four, so I, I guess that's because most... CPUs these days that have got multi-cores tend to have four cores in them, so that's quite a good way of uh, sort of guesstimating, I'd say, the, how long the package is going to take to build. Take it with a pinch of salt, as always, as I said with the LFS4. There are various factors which will affect the speed of it. Things like, are you on an SSD or a, a mechanical hard disk? That can have quite a significant impact on the speed of the build. How much memory you've got. Um, obviously if a package is building it's got gallons of memory and it wants to use all that memory it will use it if there's less memory it will try and avoid swapping so it might do things a little bit slower fewer packages to compile at once and in the worst situation um, a package may even go and use, uh, use um, swap space and that's something you do want to avoid if you find that um, 
you're compiling and the system's starting to swap, then you may want to consider purchasing some extra memory if that's a, an option. Otherwise, you're just going to have to wait a lot, lot longer for packages to compile, and it could be you know 10 times longer depending on the speed of your hard disk. Um, so, so for packages which use, which use Ninja, for example, anything using Meson or Rust, by default all calls are used. So similar comments will be seen in such packages even when the build time is minimal. Um, it says even parallel building uh, can take more than 15 static, uh, standard bash units. Certain machines, the time may be considerably greater even when the build does not use swap. In particular, different microarchitectures will build some files at different relative speeds, and this can introduce delays when certain make targets wait for another file to be created. So, as I say, there's all sorts of things uh, that will affect how uh, how long these packages will take. So, you can only really get a rough idea of um, how long packages take, but at least you you have got an idea that X package. It says it's going to take 45 st bash, uh, standard build units you know it's going to take a long time as opposed to one that may only say it takes two two SBUs. So it's just some information about the current book version which we're reading. Mirror sites, if you want to go to the mirror sites to read the book. How to get the source packages. Well, as we see, as we go through, we'll just be downloading the ones we need. It says not to download them all. Um, it's considered an abuse if you just go in and fetch them all from any sources that, are, that are present them. There's a change log, we won't bother looking at that. Mailing lists, um, yeah, it's good to join them if you need some help. I can answer some basic questions, but I wouldn't rely on me. I'm not an expert on LFS. I, I only present these videos because I've done it numerous number of times, but when it comes to dealing with problems, I'm, I'm not a programmer or certainly not a C programmer. Um, I don't know that much detail about the packages or C programming to be able to get myself out of a hole invariably it involves a Google when I need to fix something so I'd ask that if you do have a problem uh, you don't expect me to be able to have the answer for you the, the best place is to go to the uh, BLFS team um, they've got a wiki here as well as you can see um, and there's a page here about asking for questions and the chances are if you ask them a question either they're going to pointing in the right direction or somebody's already asked a question and it's on the wiki so it's probably a better better place to to, to ask questions about about the uh, problem that you've got invariably if you've got a problem it's something you've missed or you've mistyped something that's what I found and it sometimes helped to retrace your steps go back and maybe rebuild a couple of packages that you've already built it's there's a chance that um, as I say something's gone wrong somewhere you've missed it um, you've gone on and then that's what's caused a failure further down. So if, if you've got an inkling that something's gone wrong, go back and satisfy that inkling. Just go back and build that package and in variable that will fix it. So some information about people who are involved. Contact information will redirect you to the mailing lists. 